All right, enough cup finals. How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, Gab. Manchester United have signed Joshua Zirkze from Bologna. Jules, how much will he help? So I'm very happy, first of all, by this transfer because I wanted to see him in the Premier League uh, because I think he's a special player. But hear me out here. He's a special player because of his skill set, which is not the skill set of a pure striker, pure number nine, pure finisher. I don't think he will score you 30, 35 goals a season. But he can do so many things. So many things. He is a smart player. He's very good technically. He's strong. He's quick. He really has everything. Now, how do you fit him in this team? Is it him and Hoyland? So Hoyland is the finisher. And Zergzi is a bit of the creator as a second striker. Or do you play one or the other? This is why I'm really curious, really fascinated to see what happens. Because you don't spend 45 million on a five-year deal for someone like him if you don't play him, right? Well, he's still very young. You can alternate them. You can work it in. You've got to have an eye towards Bruno. He's got two years left. I mean, I'm assuming, I think it's objectively difficult to fit Rashford, Garnacho, or whoever, and Hoyland, and Zerxe and Bruno into the same yeah. team. I don't think it's going to happen. So, so then, I think it's more a question of getting cover. Yeah. Um, Zerxe can also play in wider areas. But then it's a different profile to Hoyland. So we go back to what kind of football are United going to play? Because if it's Hoyland starting, you don't play the same way than if it's Zerxe starting. No, but they're very young and I think they can develop. I, like, I, I don't know. The one thing which would make me uneasy is these are two guys. Like Zerxe was fantastic at Bologna, but he had pieces around him. He had a very good coach. Yeah. He had a lot of elements that were really suited to him. You know, this is a guy who I was speaking to a Dutch colleague who pointed out that, you know, he's like 22 and he's been at like six different clubs, right? Already, yeah. And others like Bayern said, uh -uh, nine, not, not good enough us. for us, right? Yeah. So it is a big leap, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what, to see what he can bring. More United, Jadon Sancho is back at training. Uh, reports are that him and Eric Ten Hag made up. Gab, do you think he will still be there, though, on September 1st? Honestly, I don't think so. Me neither. I, 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 I Definitely think, not. I don't think it's a personality thing. I think United have wingers. They have options. Um, I, the question is, can they find a home for him? And that will be the challenging part. Yeah. Juventus were hoping that Adrian Rabiot, oh. despite being a free agent on July 1st, might return to the club for another season or two. Instead, they say he's been ghosting them. It's on holidays. What do you expect? Dude, he's you're chilling. unemployed. He's chilling. I think he's playing his cards so well. No good. No rush. Let's just wait Fine. for the offers from the Premier League and Manchester United, for example, who were really keen two years ago. Maybe another team from mm. England. Okay, so when you fall down the stairs because your hair is so big that it gets stuck in the ceiling yeah. uh, and then you're unemployed and don't have any insurance and so on and then September comes and goes, it'll be fun. Yeah, you think he what? You think he's going to have no club in September? No, I think he's made so much money off of Juventus, so yeah. much money. But that's that not at least why a courtesy to pick up the phone or or get. You Veronique, know what? Veronique, it's right. Veronique, Veronique is dealing with this. I'm sure she's doing a great job. She's not answering the phone either. Is she in vacation no. with Adrian? Yeah, Does she need to chill yeah, too? Somewhere in the Maldives or something like that. Chilling. Weirdo on holiday with his Chilling. mother, man. Dude, cut your freaking hair. <laughs> Aston Villa are reportedly close to picking up Amadou Nana from Everton for a fee of around fifty million pounds. Does it make sense to you? I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he's the right age profile. If they can, again, okay. I he, thought they had no money. I'm a bit. It's the magic of amortization. Okay. If you give him a five-year deal, it costs you ten million, and you made money off of Douglas Luiz. And and who's the other weirdo? The guy they 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 sent to they swapped with Everton with Luis Dobbin, right? Uh, yes, all this stuff, or right? Kelly Man at Chelsea or whatever <laughs> or it's called. Kelly Man. Yeah. I, from a purely footballing sense, I think it makes makes a lot of sense. Obviously, he's a natural replacement for, for Douglas Luiz, if you want that. Yeah. I think they, they needed that, too, because I know you kept talking to me about Bubakar, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Come on. Let's, let's be real. It's injury as well. He needs to come back. Yeah, who knows when the guy's going to be fit. Yeah, yeah. Uruguay beat Canada on penalties for the coveted Copa America bronze medal. Yeah. We love our third-place games. We, we do. Jules, what did you make of Canada keeper Dane St. Clair? And yes, that is his real that name. Is his name. I, honestly, I thought it was made up. It, it sounds like, well, an adult film actor. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hiding <laughs> Uruguay goalkeeper Sergio Rocher's water bottle oh, and no. getting himself booked. Come on. Come on. This is like serious football. 
don't do this. Don't do what we playing hide and seek now. You just uh, no. So you on the bottle, you had obviously instructions. Yeah, like a lot of keepers do. Yeah, like Jordan Pickford but, does. Yeah, but like a lot of them do. So right. Do, so he's leave, hiding it. But you didn't leave the guy alone. Come on. I, it's I funny think. because you know we have stereotypes in football, right, yeah. about dark arts and stuff like that. And Uruguay are always the bad guys, right, who do yeah. these little tricks. And the Canadians are always the nice ones. Oh, look it up. Says, so, you know, Justin Trudeau, maple syrup, the Mountie, hey, you know, whatever. And then it's one of them who goes and turns villain. I know. And Luis Suarez, who... Who didn't bite anybody in this game? No, but came on, scored the equalizer. Oh. Then he went to penalties, scored his penalty. And then Alfonso Davies tried a panenka, misses it. Yeah, not a good idea. And then Uruguay get that third place. And sticking with Uruguay, Gabi, Marcelo Bielsa did not hold back in slamming Kobe Ball before this match, the third place uh, playoff. Gab, what was he complaining about this time? He was complaining about Everything. the pitches. He was complaining about security. You know what, this time I gave Bielsa a really hard time when he gave his thing where he looks really wise with the first speech about football belongs to the poor, oh, poverty, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Because I said, this makes no sense. And you're just like a rambling guy who wants to appear intellectual. Or, or, or fools think you're intellectual yeah. because, you know, I'm not saying he's not intellectual. But he's 100% correct. He used the term plague of liars. Uh, a lot of things were really badly handled by yeah. Comeball in this. Comeball bear a lot of the responsibility. And it's good that they hold him to account. What I would like to see go further, though, Bielsa, Scaloni. It's not like Comeball is some sort of organization, the Illuminati ordained by God. Comeball is just 10 federations. Scaloni, you're employed by the Argentine FA. Bielsa, yeah. you're employed by the Uruguay FA. Go to your bosses, because they are comable. The leaders of your FAs are comable. And say, we can't work like this. I'm sure Brazil will back you. I'm sure a lot of people will back you. Yeah. Patrick Vieira is the latest name to be linked to the vacant U.S. men's national team job. Jules, do you like this? I like this a lot. I think uh, he was he's quite keen to go still. He was quite keen to go before. Never really had any contact uh, after the 2022 World Cup. But yeah, I think it would be great. You used to live in the States. Yeah, of course. Gab, Juventus have been trying to shift Weston McKenney all summer long. Could Inter Miami offer him a home? Um, I, I don't know where they keep finding money to sign all these players, but hey, yeah. if they can. What, what yeah. happened to the DP? No, uh, I, I don't, Not that's, that, Those are MLS mysteries. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's good for the US. I, I genuinely don't know if Weston McKenney at this stage of his career, going back and playing in MLS, uh, makes any sense. Like, he does, he's got a year left on his deal. He's going to have to take a pay cut and go somewhere else if he wants to stay in Europe. That's the reality. Yeah, yeah. Diario As in Spain are reporting that Real Madrid and their fitness coach, Antonio ah. Pintus, the legend. That is Antonio of Pintus. Course. They want to put Kylian Mbappe on a physical regimen similar to that which helped extend Cristiano Ronaldo's career, even when, yeah. he, when he bulked up and became the Greek god that he is today. Yeah. Good idea? I think anything that helps you becoming better, better player, fitter player, sharper player is welcome by anybody, I would hope. Like if someone comes to see you and say, listen, if you do what I say, you know, you're going to improve everything in your life, like as much as you can. So I'm sure Kylian will be in agreement. I mean, he's 25 years old, so it's not like if he was towards the end of his career, right. he wanted to extend that a bit more. But Pintus, as we know, together, and you especially, Gabby, works his people really, really hard. So this should yeah, be a good thing. I, I think the one thing I would say to this is, it, I think people are getting a little ahead of themselves, right? Yeah, like, maybe. Because like you said, it's not like the transformation that Cristiano underwent was a little bit older yeah. at that stage. Kylian is a different player with, with different characteristics. I don't think Kylian will ever be as good as Cristiano in the air, for no. example. Um so you take this into account. I think most likely what happened here is somebody talked to Pintus or somebody talked to somebody who talked to Pintus yeah. and says like, hey, are you excited to work with Mbappe? And he says, yes, I want to, you know, such a phenomenal athlete, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do the best to, to keep him fit and have him play for Real Madrid as long as possible. And then it turns into, yeah, oh, look, it's going to be like Cristiano. <laughs> no, I, yeah, do not expect to see a, a, a buffed up yeah. Kylian. Kylian, who, by the way, would be presented as a Real Madrid player tomorrow on Tuesday in a full Bernabeu and I think a very special presentation. Full Bernabeu Madrid in the middle of July. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Iceland's Aimir Algrimsson is the new coach of the Republic of Ireland. But Gab, what's this story about him not giving up his dentistry career? <laughs> okay. I, remember, I, I vaguely remember this when I saw your cricket. So, Heimer Halgrimsson 
is a dentist. And yes. even when he was coaching in Iceland, he continued with his dental practice. Um, then he went to coach Jamaica, did yeah. badly with Jamaica. Very badly. In that time when he was, de- he was coaching Jamaica, a lot, of, a lot of his patients at his dentistry practice back in Reykjavik yeah. said, oh no, I only trust you, Heimir. Um, they just, apparently, as the story goes, they stopped going to see the dentist, which is a very bad thing. You no. should have regular checkups with your dentist. I mean, I must be a really good dentist. Maybe a better dentist than he is a football coach. I don't know. I don't know how the Republic of Ireland ended up with him. Because like, I, with, with all due respect, like, it's not like he's a young up-and-comer. No. It's not like... I, it's, it's, it, it's an odd one, but he's come out and said like, oh, look, it's only a couple hours from, uh, from uh, Dublin, Dublin to, to, yeah. uh, to Reykjavik. Um, a few appointments I'll, and then up. Yeah, I'll come up, yeah. get some appointments in, <laughs> make a bit of cash on the side. Why not? <laughs> uh, I, I, I love you. So look, and I'm, making fun That's of the, good. That's... I'm not making fun of the Republic of Ireland. The Republic of Ireland have been to World Cups. They might be at the next World Cup. They've got some very good players. Yeah. But it just shows you the divide, right? International managers. You've got Southgate. You've got Spalletti. You've got these guys making millions and millions. The U.S. wants to hire Klopp and whatever. And then this dude's still a part-time dentist. Yeah. Uh, Pretty remarkable, I think. (laughs) 